Hello crypto family, this is Bitstream here bringing you another video today. Today's video is going to be for uh, the beginners out there um, and people that are just now taking their first dip into crypto. Maybe somebody mentioned it to you and you're trying to do some more investigating on what to do, what it's all about, how to get started. Um, or more specifically, um, I've been doing some meetups locally with some people and introducing them to the cryptocurrency space and they had some specific questions about some very um, basic introductory subjects uh, so i wanted to approach those topics and touch on those for the very very new people out there uh, just to get you started into whatever that you want to invest in um, and how to get Bitcoin and a few items that you're going to need to know in order to get Bitcoin. So this is going to be in response to some things that I was asked um, to help people get started. So we're going to go over um, these things called wallets. This is something that you're going to need to know in the cryptocurrency space, how to use wallets, what uh, public keys are, private keys, um, how to move Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency around from one place to another. Um, and we're going to talk about how to transfer, what that stuff looks like. And then I'll briefly touch on um, some new platforms that I'm investigating that I've uh, recently given the green light as far as things that I think are reputable um, as far as making passive income after much research. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see on the screen, uh, there is a program on my computer called Exodus. So Exodus is one of the most popular wallets out there for cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and Ethereum and things of that nature. So what a wallet is, it's like an account. It's a place to hold your cryptocurrency. So if you think about cryptocurrency, like you think about physical dollars, your physical dollars have to be held somewhere, whether they're at the bank, whether they're in your pocket, under your pillow, somewhere. So wallets perform the same function. So your cryptocurrency is based on codes and those codes can only reside at one place at one time. So they can reside on your desktop through a wallet like this. They can reside on the internet through a platform like a Coinbase or, you know, uh, wherever, wherever your investments are held. And they can actually also reside on a USB stick. Uh, there's things called Treasure, I think it's pronounced, um, and other similar items, or through a file on a regular USB stick or even on a piece of paper. There's a call paper wallets. So anytime that you have your cryptocurrency stored off of the internet, where it resides on your computer, like this particular Exodus wallet or on a piece of paper or something like that, that is referred to as cold storage. So anytime you hear that term, that means that it is not accessible via the internet. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into a little bit more detail. So let's say that you have some Bitcoin and you don't want to store it online. So what you're going to want to do to get it here or transfer it anywhere is you're going to want to go to your wallet and then come to your cryptocurrency of choice. And this is pretty much universal for most transactions via the internet or not. You're always going to have a send button or something to send money from where this is. And you're always going to have something to receive the coin to where this is. Okay. So when I go to hit send, it's going to ask what address I want to send this to and how much I want to send okay and if you come down here you can also see that there is a network fee now this is going to depend on the particular cryptocurrency you're sending 
uh, Bitcoin is usually a bit more expensive to send than most other currencies and that's determined by market forces and we can get into that later but just understand that sending Bitcoin is going to cost you a little bit of that Bitcoin to compensate the people that are processing this transaction and making it secure so this you're going to need an address to send to so think about it like sending mail or email you have to have an email address to send an email so in essence you're emailing your coin from one place to another so you can have many different addresses out there that you can send to okay so if I escape out of this and then I hit receive what's going to pop up is this funny looking box and then a code down here so a, a really long code so this is my receiving address this is my public address this is like the address on your mailbox or your email address in the same vein just because somebody has your address does not mean they have access to your coin this address is designed to be in public so that you can give it out so that you can receive coin but you cannot send coin using this address this is only a one-way address okay so you can be free to give this address out publicly now one thing to know about Bitcoin and other coins like it specifically the transactions are also public so if somebody has your address you can track where the you know how much coin has been sent to that address how much coin is received to that address and sent from that address and how much coin is actually inside of that address now they don't know whose address that necessarily is but they know that this particular address has this much coin and this much activity all transactions on Bitcoin and coins like it are on a public ledger it's on what's called the blockchain and anybody can access the blockchain so that's something to know okay so if I wanted to receive Bitcoin to my Exodus wallet from an external source like let's say I just bought some Bitcoin from coinbase for example and I wanted to send it offline off of the internet to my wallet here on my computer I would need this address and what I would do is I would copy this address and then I would paste it to the corresponding send area wherever I'm sending it from because it would be asking for this send Bitcoin address where am I sending the Bitcoin to and this receive is where you're sending it to okay so there you go now this works the same for all cryptocurrency that I've come across so whether it's Bitcoin cash for example whether it's dash ethereum whatever it is you're going to have the same send and receive mechanic there now a very important thing is you do not want to mix up your addresses so in other words if I want to send Bitcoin to myself I don't accidentally want to pull up the Bitcoin cash receive address so I do not want to send Bitcoin to my Bitcoin cash wallet address what could potentially happen is that your Bitcoin will be lost and there is no recovering it if you send it to an address that does not accept Bitcoin it's just gone okay very important so what I always recommend when you're doing a transfer between your coins is number one you you actively tell yourself to check and double check that it is a Bitcoin or BTC address that is the code for Bitcoin BTC and not BCH or BBH or anything else okay that's number one and then number two you want to check the first few and the last few letters and numbers of your address even if you copy and paste it why because there are viruses out there that will change a few letters in your address to send it elsewhere other than where you intend the chances are not likely that you have that particular virus but it does exist 
So it's always a good rule of thumb to check the a few letters within your address to make sure what you're pasting is exactly what you think you're pasting. Another way is to use these codes. These are called QR codes. So if you have a mobile app on your phone and you're trying to send, let's say from Coinbase, who happens to have a mobile app, you can pull up the corresponding send button on your phone. It will pull up your camera and then all you have to do is point your camera at this particular QR code and it will paste in the address for you and then it will send that way. So that is another shortcut to go ahead and do that. All right. So that is wallets. Once again, your wallet is like your account, your bank account, or your uh, a place to store your actual coins. Your coins are going to be based on a send and receive platform. So you can send from your particular wallet and you can receive to your particular wallet using your code. Again, it looks like this, okay? So that is how you move money around. Do not forget about the transfer fees for that particular currency. You can see, for example, the network fee here is about $4.50, regardless of how much I send. So it is not based on how much you send, it's only based on the particular currency that you're sending, okay? If you can look at Bitcoin Cash, for example, it only costs about a penny to send any amount that you want to send. Dash, for example, is another penny. So right now, Bitcoin is one of the most expensive to send, okay? Ethereum is getting up there. It's about $1.40 to send on Ethereum right now, okay? So a lot of people like to use Litecoin to send transactions because it's a little bit cheaper. So you can use any of these you want, and that's an advantage of using alternate coins if you want to go that route, all right? So that's how you move money back and forth. This is also how you take your Bitcoin off of the internet and into your personal uh, computer so that nobody can have access. Now, if you lose your computer or you break your computer or something like that, then you're going to lose access to your coins because your coins are stored then on your hard drive. So if your computer crashes or something like that, and there are stories out there where people have lost many, many Bitcoin um, by losing access to their computer, you're also going to lose access to your coins. Now, what you can do is you can make a backup because in the same way that you have a public address right here where people can send Bitcoin to, you also have what's called a private key. OK, and if you have your coin stored on the Internet, you do not have access to your private key. That means you do not control the actual coin that is in your account. If it's online, that can be Coinbase, that can be anywhere else, but you do not have control over your coin. So if something happens to that online website, they go offline then you lose access to the control of your coins, okay? So let's say that you're worried about losing your computer or it breaking or crashing or whatever. You can actually use a wallet like an Exodus wallet to get access to your private keys and you can store them off of your computer. You can store them in a USB stick. You can write it down or print it out and store it elsewhere if you want to. But if you come over here, to your ex Exodus menu for this particular example. And then you come down to developer and then you come over here to Bitcoin, for example, and then you can see the menu right here. You can export your private key. Okay. Now that is the private key for this wallet. So even though my wallet is empty right now, it still has a private key. Now, what I can do is I can print off this particular private key and then I can um, I can store it elsewhere. So if I ever lose access to this particular wallet, I have the private key for this wallet so I can move my Bitcoin without having to have access to this particular computer or this particular Exodus wallet. OK, 
Now what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to show you my particular private key because if I ever do put money in this wallet, then that means anybody who sees that key can access my particular wallet as if it's theirs. And they can go online and then move money out of my wallet without my permission because all, I, all they need is that private key. So this is a way for you to back up your access to your wallet, okay? Um, you can also move funds to a different wallet, um, to a different computer if you have Exodus wallet. So you can definitely do those particular things and we can get into all of that later, but this is just for the basics, okay? But I can print off my particular private key and it looks very similar to this, okay? So it's a code that it, it looks like this so it's not like a remarkably different thing or anything like that. But what will happen if I exported my private key, it will print out a file on my computer that has my particular private key code on there. And then I could store that wherever I want to. I can print it off, I can put it on a USB stick, I can do whatever I want from that particular point. Now again, just understand that that private key holds the keys to this wallet that can unlock this wallet. Okay, so you want to be careful when you're handling that particular key if you have or plan to have in the future a lot of funds in your particular wallet. In other words, you don't want to be emailing it around where somebody can hack into your email or something like that. You want to treat it as if it's the password to your bank account. Okay, so um, that's pretty much how wallets work. Um, that is very uh, very much the fundamental thing that you're going to want to understand as you start your cryptocurrency journey is how wallets work, how to get access to your coin, how to control your coin, and what control of your coin means. Okay. Um, I believe one last thing while I'm thinking about it, I haven't looked into it yet, but you can also print off a what's called a paper wallet from Exodus, I believe. Um, it's a similar thing where you have um, a code like this and then the code printed off on this on a particular piece of paper and then it will also have the private access code on the other side of the piece of paper so it looks like this uh, printed out twice okay so so you can um, print off that particular code So you can print off that particular code on a piece of paper and then nobody else can access your Bitcoin once you send your Bitcoin to that physical address. Nobody else can access your coin if they don't have access to that piece of paper, including you. So if something happens to that piece of paper, it burns up in a fire or the dog eats it or whatever, they also eat all of your Bitcoin, okay? So it's like digitizing your actual dollars and putting it on that piece of paper. Um, so I know people that have stored their paper wallet in safes. They've cut it up. You know, um, I believe the there's uh, Bitcoin billionaires that have cut up their piece of paper and stored it in different banks around the globe so that nobody can access their coin whatsoever without putting all of those pieces of paper together. Um, so just something to look out for this, that's pretty much how it works. Um, yeah, so that's how you, uh, secure your coin. That's how you transfer coin back and forth. And what I'm going to do now is show you what the, a similar, uh, similar process looks like online. So you can get a walkthrough of that. So here we have Coinbase. Um, this is what most people are probably going to be starting out with when they start their Bitcoin journey, especially if you're talking to me, because I think it's the most user friendly, although it's not my um, my favorite choice to use, but it is very user friendly and it takes very little explanation of how to actually get into Bitcoin. So it's good to start out with. So if I want to see my particular wallet on Coinbase, what I would do is come over here to accounts 
and then we can see my different wallets right here they call it accounts on coinbase but these are your wallets and you can see we still have the same setup we have a send button and we have a receive button so we can see on the right hand side i've sent and received coin already from different places so it gives you your transactions right there um, if I wanted to do Bitcoin cash transactions, I would do that right here, Ethereum and all of that good stuff, right? So here's my send button, here's my receive button, okay? And you even have right here, you have US dollar wallet, same kind of thing, okay? You have deposit, you have withdrawal, it's the same here, send, receive, okay? So if I wanted to send this Bitcoin to my paper I mean my uh, excuse me my exodus wallet I would just hit the send button and this pop-up is going to ask me okay where am I sending it I need to enter a BTC address so I would go over to my exodus wallet and I want to receive that Bitcoin to my exodus wallet so I'm going to hit the receive button I'm going to copy this See there, to copy this address, and I'm going to hit that button so my address is copied. I'm going to come back over here to where I'm sending it from. I'm going to paste that address in there. I'm going to do my checks. Now, Coinbase has a has a fail safe built in where it's going to check and make sure that it's an actual Bitcoin wallet. That's what this green uh, symbol means. Um, if I put something else in, then it wouldn't. Uh, that green check mark wouldn't have been there um, but it has a fail safe so if I were to accidentally say put a Bitcoin cash wallet address in there it would tell me that there is an error but some wallets do not have that fail safe okay but you're going to put uh, wherever it's going is the recipient address the recipients code it's gonna ask me it's gonna tell me how much Bitcoin I have to send and then it's gonna ask me um, how much do I want to send okay so if I wanted to send the maximum amount it's going to tell me how much that is um, and then it's going to tell me there's a fee involved so you can see this particular fee uh, is a lot more than what it shows on my Exodus wallet so a thing to understand about fees is that the more you pay in a fee the faster your transaction is likely to go through because it's sitting in a queue of people waiting for attention or trying to get attention of the miners to send their transaction. So the higher the fee is, the more attention or the faster attention it's going to get because the miners are going to be trying to get to the higher fee stuff first. Um, so it's a, a very capitalistic system of transfers. So just understand that. And that's also why it's showing a negative amount here because I don't have enough to cover the fee to send from Coinbase. Um, now I'll probably touch on a little bit later or possibly in another video how to send out without having to pay that fee yourself uh, through Coinbase but for right now that's what that means and I can write an optional message just like you know if you're sending if you're writing a check they have the memo line this is the same kind of thing I believe this is only for yourself and not for the receiver uh, so that you can understand why you sent this particular um, transfer and where it went and all of that kind of stuff so there you go all right and if I were to actually send this transaction I would hit continue and then that transaction would be sent off to the miners to process now with Bitcoin transactions can take anywhere from a few minutes to a day um, the second day that I was actually in cryptocurrency trying to get started I had a transaction that took literally 24 maybe even longer hours to actually go through and I was losing my mind because what you're going to see as soon as you hit send the funds are going to disappear from your wallet and they are not going to show up on the receiving end until the transactions have been confirmed by the miners so you're feeling as though your uh, money has been is gone but it's not it's just out for processing so it's going to be okay um, coinbase has to set it up so that it gets on the network and in queue to be sent once it's in queue then it's in the miners hands to get to it to actually process it okay 
So I can also in Coinbase add an address book and enter an email uh, to send the funds. So you can do it that way if you want to. But this is the typical way that you're going to be sending funds right here through Coinbase or through any wallet. So you have send. Now, if I wanted to receive from somewhere else to my Coinbase account, let's say I wanted to send from my Exodus wallet to Coinbase, I'm going to hit the send button from my Exodus wallet. It's going to ask me where do I want to send it to? And then you're going to hit receive on your Coinbase wallet. Okay, so here you can see they're giving you a warning. Make sure that you're actually sending Bitcoin or BTC to this address and not another uh, currency or you're going to face possible loss of that particular transfer. Okay, so you're just going to hit show address, copy that address over here to send. Um, and then how much do you want to send and then hit the send button. It's that easy. Okay, so after a few minutes to a few hours, you will see that your transaction has actually hit uh, right over here. So once you actually do send or receive your Bitcoin, what you're going to see is a pending transaction. Um, and it looks something like this. This is actually a completed transaction. So I'll walk you through this particular transaction right here. So you can see the amount of Bitcoin sent, the approximate value of that Bitcoin. You're going to see the address that was involved on the other side. And then you're going to see this word confirmations. So confirmations is very important in the cryptocurrency space. Confirmations is what allows the network of that particular cryptocurrency to be secure. Uh, because in a nutshell, what happens is a whole bunch of people have to agree that your transaction actually happened. And this is how you prevent multiple coins and counterfeiting of coins and all of that kind of stuff. So you can look into that later, uh, but just understand that this is uh, part of the security of that particular cryptocurrency network. OK, so once your transaction hits the blockchain, it has to be verified by the miners. Now, this transaction happened a while ago, so this one has a ton of confirmations on it right now, 630. But when you're starting, usually people or, or the receiving end of your transaction is looking for around six transactions. OK, I've seen up to 20 before, but usually I see about six transactions or excuse me, confirmations before your transaction is considered complete and verified. So that's what this number means. This is how many miners have actually looked over and, and corroborated your particular transfer to say that this looks good. Everything looks fine. It's confirmed. OK, now this is the fee. You can see this particular transaction. I did not pay any fee on this particular transaction. This is because I send it through a different way through Coinback, uh, Coinbase through GDAX. Um, they actually cover transaction fees up to a certain amount per month for you if you transfer that way. And again, I might touch on that in this video or I'll, I'll depends on how long I'll, I'll make another video about it. Um, now transaction you can see that I have a link here so when you very when you first put in your transaction you're not going to see this particular link it's either going to be blank or something like that but it's not going to be clickable because coinbase has to actually load your transaction on the blockchain for it to be viewable before that happens this link will not be there so you won't be able to see the status of your transaction on the actual blockchain but once it is loaded, then you can go out there and look at the status of your transaction and everything. And then right here, this will be yellow and, and saying pending when you first do your transaction. So when it does get uploaded to the blockchain, let's take a look and see what that looks like. So this is actually a third party website. This has nothing to do with Coinbase or anything. This is a website called BlockCypher. This is one of many different sites that access give you access to the actual Bitcoin blockchain. Now the blockchain is that public ledger that I was talking about that anybody can access and see 
any transaction that occurs in Bitcoin. So we can see right here, we have a serial number for that particular transaction so it can be located. We have the amounts that were involved. We have the fees that were involved. Now notice here, there's fees on this particular transaction, but back on Coinbase, we didn't pay any fees. So again, this is hearkening back to the way that you can transfer on Coinbase without paying any fees and they will pay them for you. But if you come down here, you can see that this much Bitcoin was sent and here's where the receiving ends of that Bitcoin transaction were. So you can see the transaction was split into two. You can see there was a large amount of Bitcoin sent to this other address and then a small amount of Bitcoin, which was my transaction sent to this particular address. So if you wanted to come in here, you can click on these different addresses and you can click on a whole bunch of different things to learn a lot more about um, how the blockchain works and tracking down transactions and everything like that. And you can see right here, there are six plus confirmations. Uh, like I said, most places are only looking for six confirmations before they consider the transaction done. So you have a whole lot of information here um, if you want to get into um, the blockchain and all of that, but this that's beyond the scope of this particular video. So that's what a transaction looks like once complete. Now once it is confirmed, you will come over here and with most websites that I've seen, you'll get some kind of notification that your transaction is actually confirmed and done. I believe that um, Exodus will give you like an audible sound or something like that to let you know that your transaction is done. Coinbase will send you an email that you just received some money or you just sent something or something like that. Um, so it's not something that you have to sit there and reload and refresh to make sure that you know when it goes through. Most places will let you know that your wallet status has changed. Okay, so that is how you move coin from one place to another and the process is pretty much literally the same no matter what website that you go to and just to demonstrate that one more time I'll go over to Devore coin and you can see if I go over to my Devore coin wallet it's called a wallet if I click on that I have different wallets right here so I have my Devore coin wallet I have my Bitcoin wallet and I have my lending wallet if I go over to my Bitcoin wallet, what do I see? I, de I see deposit and withdraw. So if I wanted to withdraw Devora coin from here to somewhere else, or excuse me, Bitcoin, I would hit the uh, withdraw button. I don't have any Bitcoin in here at the moment, therefore it's grayed out. But if I wanted to deposit more Bitcoin in here, I would hit the deposit button. And then what do I see? I see the same familiar QR code along with a uh, long code right here that is my BTC address and I would copy this address I would come over here and paste it into the send portion of my coinbase wallet or my exodus wallet I would literally paste that code in here do my checks hit send and then a little while later I would have Bitcoin showing up in my divorce coin wallet and that balance would go up the amount that I sent minus the transfer fee okay so that works the same way you can see devour coin i have withdrawal highlighted here and i also have deposit so if i wanted to send devour coin or receive devour coin directly here the same process would apply so very very easy to use system okay so that in a nutshell is how you transfer now let's talk about actually buying Bitcoin so now you know how to transfer it now you have know how to move it all around wherever you want to move your Bitcoin to if I wanted to send my grandma or grandpa Bitcoin all I need is their Bitcoin address and I can send it to them right now but how do I actually buy Bitcoin in the first place let's say I have no Bitcoin I don't know anything about it I've heard it from a friend or I've heard it from one of my meetups or something like that and I'm interested and I want to get some Bitcoin right now. What do I do? Glad you asked. So the first thing that you're going to need to understand is that you get Bitcoin with cash or with your dollars in two basic ways. 
two basic ways. Way number one is through an exchange. When somebody says an exchange or a cryptocurrency exchange, what that means is that that is an online platform that allows you to exchange from one currency to another currency, whether that be US dollars, whether that be pounds, whether that be euros, or whether that be another cryptocurrency. So that's what an exchange does. It literally takes, allows you to trade one currency for another. Now, there are exchanges that do not accept what's called fiat currency, which is government dollars, uh, US dollars, pounds, all of that stuff. And there's some exchanges that do accept dollars and crypto, I mean, uh, fiat currency. So Coinbase, in my opinion, is the easiest to use and easiest to understand. If you have no experience whatsoever dealing with cryptocurrency, you can literally come in here, pop in your credit card or debit card and buy your first Bitcoin right now. So if I wanted to buy Bitcoin, what I would do is I would sign up for a Coinbase account. I would come over here to this buy sell tab right there. I would enter my payment method so you can use a card you can use whatever you want uh, I'm sorry not whatever you want but you can use a credit or debit card and you can use a bank account now a debit bet, credit card will allow you to buy Bitcoin immediately so I could enter in an amount pop in my credit card information and verify it and then pop in how much I want up to the limit that they allow and I could buy my first Bitcoin right now um, you can also buy different cryptocurrencies this way uh, for what they particularly allow here which is Bitcoin cash Ethereum and Litecoin so you could also do those as well so all you have to do is add a new account select which particular account that you want to do I personally have not had success with wire transfer, but apparently it goes through a lot faster. Um, hasn't worked for me yet. Um, but you can just add your credit card, you can add your bank account. Now, I will say if you do the bank account route, um, it takes a lot longer than what they're saying here. Um, it usually takes me about eight to nine days to actually see the coin show up. The good thing is you get credit for today's price so when you actually do set up your account and then you make a trade uh, using your account your your bank account if you go directly into Bitcoin your price gets frozen so you will get credit for whatever price the price is when you do your transaction even though it takes that long for the funds to actually come in but if you want to do it and get it done right now and just get it out the way you just pop in your credit card information right here add your card what will happen is they will send your card immediately to tiny transactions that you have to confirm so you just go to your card statement pop in what those amounts are and then your card will be added to this list right here you put in the amount that you want to buy and you buy coin instantly um, what you will be presented with on this right side is a confirmation are you sure you want to do this? It's going to tell you the amount of fees that it costs. So you have a Coinbase fee and then you have a credit card fee. So if I wanted to do $300, I would end up with $290 worth of Bitcoin at the particular price that it's at. Hit the button and then a couple seconds later, you are presented with your first Bitcoin and you will see that displayed right here. So that is how literally how you buy Bitcoin the easiest way that I know how okay um, this the process is the same if you use your bank account although the bank account has much higher limits so if you're trying to buy a lot more Bitcoin um, then you're going to need to use your bank account or the wire transfer method um, I believe bank accounts actually start with a thousand dollar limit I've had uh, Coinbase for a little while so my limits are a little bit higher uh, but I believe it starts out with a thousand dollar limit if you're using your checking account and the, the process the verification process is the same you literally fill out your bank information choose your bank info 
um, I believe you either put your uh, your account and routing number in or if it's one of these banks you can just sign in through Coinbase um, and make it a little bit easier and then they will still send the two transactions you just confirm those transactions and then you can go ahead and buy your coin immediately uh, once you confirm those two transactions now the process is the same or is very similar if you want to sell your Bitcoin and turn it back into dollars I know a lot of people are interested in that when you are ready to take the fruits of your labor you sell from your Bitcoin wallet or whatever coin it is to your US dollar wallet and then the amount that you want to sell and then you sell Bitcoin instantly okay be wary of the fees because there are fees if you do it this way but you can do that right here and you can also send it to PayPal for example so you can if you wanted to to sell to PayPal and uh, fund your PayPal account you can do that directly from here um, now you cannot buy using PayPal but you can sell and send it to PayPal which I find interesting but it is what it is and you can also set up set it to do it repeatedly if that's what you need so that is how you change in and out of fiat currency using coinbase okay now um, I think this video has gone on uh, long enough as far as the exchange so I have to do another one if you want to see how to do these same exact transactions without any fees um, so I'll do another video on that because that is slightly more advanced but not that much um, so I'll let that go for the time being um, and I just wanted to point out for everybody uh, that came to my meetup if you're watching this video I wanted to show you some alternate platforms that I have since uh, come to a comfort level uh, with that I am comfortable enough uh, sharing with you guys so I have since looked at this particular platform which is called Swiss Gold Global this is a way to get into mining that is in addition to hash flare uh, so if you are interested in cloud mining which in my opinion is a safer a safer bet than getting into lending platforms if you're not comfortable with that and you want to step down um, as far as or a step up in uh, safety uh, cloud mining is probably your thing and Swiss Gold Global offers mining contracts through a company called Genesis Mining where Hashflare is number two in the cryptocurrency cloud mining space uh, Genesis Mining would be number one However, Genesis Mining is always sold out of contracts, and when they do have new contracts available, they sell out very fast. Um, the bad thing about Genesis Mining is that they pre-sell their contracts, so you could buy today, but you won't start reaping rewards for months until that mining contract activates. I think the latest crop activates in March. So any money that you put towards it wouldn't start reaping rewards until then. But you can actually buy those contracts through Swiss Gold Global because they do have a corporate partnership with Swiss Gold Global where they have pre-sold them a certain amount of mining contracts, which they then turn around and sell to you. Those contracts are open-ended contracts. So in other words, they do not expire. Um, in contrast to Hashflare, which they their contracts that you spend money on expire within one year, where Genesis Mining through Swiss Gold Global, once you buy that contract, it is yours for as long as that contract is profitable. Um, so I do now regard Swiss Gold Global as a way to get into uh, cloud mining um, in addition to Hashflare if you want to look at that. And then this particular company, CCG Mining, um, is another alternative to Hashflare or in addition to Hashflare if you want to diversify. Uh, CCG Mining is based in, I forgot, I'll have to do another video, but I think they're in um, 
Switzerland or something like that. Over there in Europe. They're in Europe. Um, and I've done a lot of research on them, the background, their, their ownership. The thing I like about them is they're wide open um, as far as transparency. You can see pictures of their actual facilities. You can see the people that actually run the company. You can independently verify the people that run the company. If you look up their website, you can see the fact that um, one of the people that are listed on their website actually uh, registered this particular website and did not hide it. Uh, there's a lot of things that um, lend itself to uh, the um, lend itself to the validity of this particular company. Um, they are a little bit more on the expensive side as far as getting into it per um, you know per unit. So it's more expensive to get into per unit cost than hash flare is but a lot of these con uh, contracts again are open-ended so if you put money in here uh, these contracts will continue to uh, produce as long as the particular coin that you're in is profitable so I do um, I do feel comfortable with this uh, enough with this particular company to mention it to anybody that is in my groups or a follower to try out if you feel like uh, mining is something that you want to try. Um, I'm still working on other companies as far as getting a comfort level with them um, and other ways to earn. I'm still researching that, so stay tuned for those things, but I just did want to mention that. And I'll do some full videos on these particular companies later as well. So. That's what we have for today. I hope you learned something. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please go ahead and make sure that you subscribe to my channel for new updates. And also share this video with your friends and family so that we can all get access to this great uh, undiscovered country uh, that is cryptocurrency. So thank you again. And let's go ahead and make these gains. And this stream is out.